Hello there everybody, Sam Strains here, welcome back to the railway and welcome to another American Loco unboxing. So on this channel we have seen a lot of the good, but I think today we're going to be looking at both the bad and the ugly at the same time, because we have this, it is the Backman 262 American Prairie Union Pacific. What an interesting model this is. Now I bought this second hand, as you could probably imagine, from Hattons, would you believe, their pre-owned department, uh, for £50. And I have to admit, now that I've got it and that I've seen it, I have to admit that £50 was quite heavily overpriced for this. Uh, I think, if we're being honest. Uh, now I have had this out very briefly to service it, uh, because as I say, it's a second hand model and I want to make sure it's working right before the review. And so I didn't get a chance to really look at it properly uh, in terms of the detail and whatnot. Uh, but from what I can remember and from what I did see mm, I don't think this is going to be up to much so yeah we're going to be taking a little bit of a look at this now if you're thinking of getting one of these uh, my first response to you would be probably don't look at almost anything else but if you want to I certainly wouldn't recommend paying any more than 30 pounds or perhaps 40 dollars because this is definitely a little bit dodgy so we're going to get this out <laughs> let's see what this is like uh, I notice on the front it says smokes and lighted although I think that ought to say lit really I'm no grammar expert but yeah I don't think lighted makes sense in that context. Either way, I thought I'd better just also clear up that this is a starter locomotive. This isn't a super modern Backman loco or anything like that. It's designed for beginners, but even so, we have Hornby Railroad locos, which are very, very high standards. So we're going to be comparing this a little bit to those. Okay, let's get started. I'm laughing because I've seen some of the details on this thing. Let's go. So yes, as you can tell by the box, this is a little bit of an old loco. It has been around for a little while. However, as far as I can tell, it isn't all that old. In fact, I don't think it's even old enough to appear on my vintage ranking list. And the reason I think that is because I had a quick look online. I can't find an exact date for this, by the way, but I found a diagram of the mechanism of this loco from the mid-1990s, I believe, which had the old pancake motor, similar to what the mainline locos used to use. And obviously, well, not obviously at this point, but this loco, in fact, has a can motor. It doesn't have the pancake motor, which means that this has to be later than the mid-1990s, uh, possibly even quite a bit later. This could have even been as far as the 2000s. So we're talking only about 20 years old at the most with this. Uh, so we're going to treat it as such. Uh, so anyway, <laughs> so we're going to have to take a look at the paperwork, by the way, once we get this out and see if we can spot a firm date on there. Anyway, if I show you the end of the box, you can see there is a handwritten price on there of £45. But as I say, yes, I did have to, I did actually pay more than that. Uh, so yeah, confused about uh, why it was so expensive. But either way, what's done is done. This is 51501. It's an HO Prairie 262 and tender with smoke Union Pacific. Uh, so it does have smoke and I believe it is lighted as it says on the front, even though I, I, that term doesn't sound too right to me. Okay, so yeah, Union Pacific, it has the running number 1836. As far as I can tell, this thing never existed in real life, um, which is unusual for me as a British person because uh, I, do, I have very, very few locos which are actually fictional, but it seems like half of the American ones I buy are fictional. Uh, the reason I say that is because uh, apparently this body was used on an 060 to start with, and then Backman changed the chassis and put a 262 on it. Uh, and when I found that out, I thought, well, no wonder I couldn't find any uh, resemblance to it. It does look like certain locos are out there in real life, but uh, I can't find anything that it's uh, firmly based on. Anyway, let's get this out then. I'm sure you're all desperate to see, he says, without any sarcasm. Here we are. There we go. So there's the loco from a distance. It looks all right, doesn't it? And I have to say, I mean, it's not a hideous shape. I do think the uh, the wheel set looks odd on such a large body, uh, but I suppose it will do if this used to be uh, an 060. Okay, so let's have a quick look at some of this paperwork then. So first of all, we have the diagram. There we go. And I'm having a quick look on there, but I can't spot any dates on there. So maybe that's still going to be a mystery, unfortunately. But as you can see, it does have the exploder diagram with all of the different parts labeled on there, uh, including the smoke generator, which uh, we'll have to try, I reckon, later on. And then on the back, yep, yeah, it's just uh, got a, a list of all the different parts and things. Again, no dates as far as I can tell on there. Let's have a very, very quick look at the other paperwork then and just have a look. Uh, oh, okay. It says on here, a slight deformation of the chimney is possible if the local runs continuously for more than 30 minutes without smoke liquid. 
blimey, so the thing might burn down if I don't put smoke liquid in there. So I think I'll have to do that, won't I? And uh, that's just uh, this is just a lifetime warranty thing. So that's enough of that. Let's have a quick look then at uh, the detail pack. And what I mean by detail pack is the smoke fluid. There it is. That's a nice bottle, isn't it? Um, so we'll have to use we'll have to use that and see if the smoke unit does work. Uh, normally they're not very good, but uh, we'll certainly give it a chance. And for now, then let's get the loco and tender out. Although we'll start with the tender because they're not connected on this one. So here we are, the Union Pacific tender. It looks like quite a nice tender, actually. I would say the tender is one of the nicest parts of the model. Although, as you can see underneath there, we do only have plastic wheels, which is quite cheap and nasty, really, isn't it? And uh, I don't know how it can be lit either. Yeah, there's a lamp on the back, or lighted, let's say. Um, but uh, obviously that can't be lighted because uh, there are only plastic wheels on the tender. So it should have said partially lighted, I guess. But there we go, that's the tender. It isn't too bad looking. And here's the loco. Uh, I won't call it hideous or anything like that, but it certainly has got odd proportions, hasn't it? I think you'd have to say that. Uh, but yeah, there it is. Not too bad looking from a distance, but just wait until we get in close. Okay, let me hold the tender with it and we'll have a quick look. So as you can probably tell, we're going to be having a bit of a laugh. We're going to be having some fun with this today because, uh, yeah, <laughs> I think that's the best way to go. So here's a little bit of history then on the prairies of America. And I hope you enjoy it. And then we'll get a nice close look at this, or perhaps not quite so nice. Either way, here we go with a little history. So, over in the USA, the prairie design was an evolution of the popular 260, and the first prairies were pioneered by the AT and SF at the start of the 20th century, 1901 or 1902, I believe it was. Over the years, over a thousand prairies were built in total in the US with a huge variety of different designs. Now this example, as I've said, shows 1836 and it has Union Pacific on the tender, but it's very unclear whether or not this truly existed. The only photos I can find online of that particular engine are of this Backman model. So there's a good possibility that they just invented this themselves, although supposedly this Backman model did start as an 060, as I've said, and it's had a different chassis put on, so that would explain it, I would think. Now, there there is a 262 preserved on the Ventura County Railroad, uh, which somewhat resembles this. I think if you want to look it up, it's number two, I think it is. Um, but that's the closest I can find, and even that isn't a perfect match. Okay, so there it is then, Union Pacific 1836, the American Prairie, up against the white background for you. And uh, yes, as you can probably tell, I'm not massively keen on this thing. Uh, that's just a matter of opinion. If you really like this or anything, or if you agree, whatever the case might be, do let me know down in the comments and it will be interesting to find out what you guys think. But obviously this is a starter locomotive, so we're not going to be expecting a massive amount of detail. But in my opinion, a beginner slash starter locomotive needs to fulfill at least two requirements. Uh, and this is my opinion, but first of all, it needs to be good quality. And I think everybody needs good quality, not just seasoned modelers, even beginners need good quality. So that has to be a must. But the second thing is that it has to be a nice model. And I know nice is a bit of a nebulous term, but it needs to be nicely made and it needs to be nice looking. Because obviously the idea is that the beginner who hasn't spent an awful lot on this will enjoy themselves and want to get into the hobby in a bigger way and then possibly go on to buy some of the more expensive models, let's say. And so it needs to be good enough to really get them interested. And I don't think that this model fulfills either of those categories. So let's take a look at the quality then and the niceness of this model to use that horrible word again. Look at the chassis. You've got this massive block chassis with these tiny wheels in it, uh, undetailed by the way, and you have got these massive screws which are visible. Uh, definitely not very nice to see. Other than that, I suppose the valve gear and the linkage rods and such does actually look reasonably decent. That isn't too bad looking. But uh, the Loco itself is pretty disgusting looking in certain areas. For example, look, just look at the whistle there that's coming out there. Now that has to be more excess plastic and less whistle there because that is just absolutely horrendous. I've never seen anything look as laughably poor as that. And look at the bell. It looks like it has literally melted. Um, it's barely recognisable as a bell. I'm even amazed that they've painted that. Um, and talking of paintwork, obviously it's basically an unpainted model. It's completely plain black. Uh, they haven't even bothered to uh, put the builder's plate details on there. Uh, the only thing that is on the loco itself is, of course, the running number there, 1836, which I suppose at least has been reasonably nicely applied. But apart from that, the detail is very, very basic. Really, the only separately fitted part I can see is the handrail there, which actually is reasonably fine scale, but I think that's about the only thing on the model that is. 
Around the front, once again, there is quite a lot of moulded detail, but it is only that. There's nothing separately fitted as far as I can see, at least not with the smoke box door. The pilot area of the Loco is relatively complex, really, in terms of the moulded detail. But again, you've got this really sort of ugly coupling on the front, uh, which is a pure dummy. You can't use it. So again, that's a little bit odd, isn't it? Uh, most of our British starter Locos actually have a working coupling on the front to make the Loco a little bit more usable. But uh, no, not with this one. And as you can see, the cab is very, very very basic and look at the molding around the windows it is really quite messily done and a lot of the detail on the model is very very messy as you can see there's this really hideous seam line along the whole top of it it goes across all of the domes and things as well and there's little things like the gaps in the cab roof and such which is really quite noticeable and inside the cab if you remember the Mahano cab that we looked at which was actually two pounds cheaper than this by the way it was really quite impressive this one is very very basic indeed there's a tiny amount of molded detail on there but apart from that, that is about it. So yeah, just, I don't know, it's it's not bad from a distance, is it? But when you look up close, it really does start to show, uh, well, I don't know what it shows, but it's certainly not nice. And the tender is quite similar, really. I suppose there is a reasonable amount of detail on the side of it. You can see there's quite a lot of riveting on there. But the bogies are very, very simple, as you can see. Not an awful lot of molded detail on there. And again, those plastic wheels don't really match with the Loco. Of course, we've got all metal wheels on the Loco and then plastic on the tender, so it really doesn't match up at all. And once again, on the Loco, this lamp supposedly works, except on the tender, the lamp looks completely different. It's just been painted silver, and that one doesn't work. So again, it's, it's almost as though the tender and the Loco don't match. Now, once again, we do have the separately fitted metal handrails on the tender, but only in some places. On the top there, we do. However, on the front and back, you can see they are just uh, quite badly moulded on, uh, which is a little bit unusual, I suppose. The coal load is actually quite realistic, though, unlike the rest of the model. That actually looks half decent so why they decided to do that thing properly i'm not too sure but uh, yeah that's quite good isn't it and then on the back we do have that uh well is it a knuckle cup no it's not a knuckle coupler is it uh, i don't know i don't know what it is i've got quite a few bits of rolling stock with that on it though so uh, we'll try and get that coupled to some rolling stock and see what it pulls like um, but yeah as a 20 year old model this looks a lot more like a 40 year old model doesn't it it really does and no doubt the tooling is closer to that number anyway okay so let's get this down onto the track and we'll talk a little bit about performance oh goodness gracious okay so there is 1836 down onto the track ready for a little bit of a performance test now just like every other aspect of the model the mechanism on this is very very poor now if you're familiar with the term split chassis you'll probably be shuddering right now but yes this is indeed a split chassis mechanism which basically means instead of pickups you have a big heavy chassis which touches straight onto the axles of the wheels to pick up power now for reliability that is very good you generally get pretty good continuity from split chassis locos but it also means that there's an awful lot of friction between the wheel set and the chassis and that puts a lot of strain onto the axles and often you get them failing because there's a plastic insulation between both wheels which uh, invariably cracks and uh, fails over time. So generally not a very nice mechanism. On top of that, even though it's a heavy loco, there are two traction tyres on this on both of the back wheels here, the, both of the back driving wheels, which means effectively those are completely insulated from the track. So you've only got two wheels per track picking up. And I've counted there are 18 wheels on this model in total and only four of them pick up so that's less than a quarter very very poor on top of that you have plastic tender wheels which obviously means there is no tender pickup on this model which is very very unfortunate uh, generally speaking the mechanism is a little bit cheap and nasty however it does seem to run okay so let's do a little bit of a test as you can see, in fact, given the poor mechanism, it does seem to run very, very nice and slowly. Uh, let's try that in reverse. So it looks as, I mean, and also the traction tyres, of course, do cause this to be a very, very powerful model as well. So performance wise, it isn't too bad. Although, of course, the lack of pickups makes it quite unreliable on point work, for example. And if I just keep this crawling forward now onto the express points, you'll see it stop. And obviously that's just unacceptable for a 262 tender loco because there should be no reason for so few pickups. Uh, but yet it is so unreliable. And there we go, just across the points there, it has stopped. Let's turn this around for you. There we go. Right, well, we'll try it in reverse, see if it works, see if it will get back over them. There we are, slightly speed it up a bit. 
Oh, no. <laughs> Stopped on the dead zone of the point that time. So yeah, it's unfortunate. There's no reason to have so few pickups on a model like this. It is quite unfortunate. It does have a light though. Let me show you the light working. There we go. It's not very bright. You wouldn't know there was a light in this, I told you. But uh, never mind. But there is one. Oh, stopped again. <sighs> Honestly, yeah, not a good runner. There is one element of the model which does interest me though, and that is of course the smoke generator. So let's test that and see how that works. Okay, so for this test, I've put it onto the rolling road because if this is anything like the other Bachmann smoke generators I've had, uh, you can't really see them working unless the loco itself is still. So I'm giving this its best possible chance. So here is the bottle of uh, fluid, which was thus far unopened, but I have just uh, snipped the top off and put the lid back on. And the instructions call for about five drops of smoke fluid going into that chimney. Uh, although this one's completely dry, it's never had any put in it before, so I'm going to put six in just to be generous. Uh, so let's do that right now. Hopefully I can still count to five. Let me see if I can do this so you can see it. Right. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Okay. <laughs> Some of those sort of ran down the inside of the chimney, so I'm hoping they, they got down. But uh, either way, let's give it some juice and see if it's going to smoke. Turn it up nice and fast. Oh, it's spitting. And there is smoke coming out, but it's, it's not coming out of the chimney. <laughs> it's coming out from the wheels. <laughs> What's happening? Oh, oh, hey, look. Hey, that's pretty good. Hey, that's actually pretty decent. I'm amazed. So this model has a good feature. Let's see if I can zoom out a bit. Who would have thought it? Hmm. Hey, well, that's all right. Hmm. Well, that's made this model not completely useless. Have to see how that looks on the track then. Oh, I quite like that, that's rather good. Okay, so she is back onto the track as you can see and I've set up three, uh, I think they're Central Pacific coaches in fact, so they're not necessarily correct coaches for the Loco, but uh, they do have the same couplings, so uh, for that reason I'm going to run them. So let's go and couple to them, she'll have no trouble pulling with them I, I, I don't doubt, because uh, she obviously does have two traction tyres, so there is a reasonable amount of power there. So let's reverse this up. There we go, let's get her off into shot. There we go, is she focused? Yeah, that looks all right. Okay, so let's give it a little bit of a run. I wonder how fast she's gonna have to run before the smoke works, but uh, we'll find that out. We'll leave her at medium speed for the time being. Okay, so I'll show you what else I'm gonna be running. On the outside line, we have another Backman American Loco. This one's much, much better. It is, of course, the Berkshire, very, very popular on my channel seems to have derailed no no it's all right and it's got a bit of a hopper train and people were talking about cabooses in my last american video and they were commenting that i didn't show one so there it is i've got a caboose in this one for you and now on the middle line i wanted to say inside line because i've done it in a funny order today we have the mahano loco that i reviewed last time that was my last american review and it actually this loco was produced during the late 1990s as well and it is in fact leaps and bounds better than the backman such a nice mechanism in this one it runs really really well the details better the lights brighter it's got tender pickups that's what it ought to have been and by the way it was two quid cheaper it cost me 48 quid and not 50. so a big disappointment is the backman one but at least the Mahano stuff's good. I'm going to stick with Mahano in the future. I think it's just better. So see which other American locos you can spot on the line, and I hope you enjoy the running session. So I'm not surprised, <laughs> but there's no smoke coming out of the Backman anymore. So the question is, has it run out? Do I need to top it up, or do I need to speed it up to get it hot enough? Of course, so if you speed it up, then there's more wind, so it blows the smoke away. But we'll try it at full speed and see if that works. If not, I'll put a few more drops into it. Mm, no, still can't see any smoke. I'm going to have to top that up then. Look at that. Just such a much nicer model is that Mahano. It really is. And there's the Berkshire. Also a Backman model, but ten times better. You wouldn't know that it was the same manufacturer. 
It's definitely designed to be a much more serious model though than the uh, Prairie. Okay, so I've put a few extra drops of smoke in then since speeding it up didn't help. And I can see smoke again. Haha, <laughs> that's good. So the smoke is very good, easily the best feature of this model. Uh, apart from that, it runs a little bit wobbly, I've noticed as well, and that's quite usual for a split chassis model. I will say now that I can see the smoke, I will go ahead and say I do not hate this model. <laughs> the smoke has very slightly redeemed it, and that's only a gimmick, it's not, uh, you know, it doesn't make it a good model, but uh, it just stops it from being an absolutely terrible model. Quite like the smoke. All right, so let's have some ratings then for the Backman Prairie. Man, I don't know where to start on the detail. Well, let's say it did have some detail and it wasn't very good. <laughs> let's have another look at that bell. Oh my goodness gracious. I want that bell framed on a wall somewhere. No, I think so. Not on my wall though, definitely not. Uh, so yeah, one star, absolutely horrendous. The detail that was on there was very, very poorly realized and generally just very, very poor and unrealistic looking. Performance, I have to say, was a lot better. Despite the poor mechanism, it does actually run very nicely with a good degree of strength. So I have to say that the performance is probably the best part of the model at four stars there. The mechanism, though, is a two out of five. The traction tyres, the split chassis, the lack of pickups, it isn't a great mechanism, unfortunately. Uh, so two stars there at the absolute most. The quality, once again, very, very poor. The Just the quality of the plastic moulding, the quality of the mechanism, generally a very disappointing model in terms of quality. Can't recommend it on those grounds. And the value, goodness knows how much this cost when it was new, but I paid 50 quid and I think that's just too much for what is quite a, a nasty model. <laughs> let's say so two stars there on the value i'm sorry for laughing it's not very professional but i can't help it overall then that is 4.11 out of 10 into the ranking it goes it's not even old enough to go into the vintage ranking so there it is against the modern stuff bottom of the list 4.11 out of 10 just below the backman let's see the war department 280 yep <laughs> not surprised to see it at the bottom to be honest Smoke stopped again. <laughs> it doesn't last two minutes, it really doesn't. Put a few more drops in just to finish. I put quite a lot of fluid in there that time. I put another six drops in and that seems to be smoking really good this time. Oh, that was a good shot of the smoke. You saw quite a lot there. Oh gosh. Well, if I can speak while this disaster's unfolding. Nope, obviously not. Hang on. There we go. Fix that. So I will say, because of the smoke gimmick, it is quite fun to run. And it isn't too much of a bad runner. So provided you can get one cheap, if you want something to play with and have a bit of fun with, it's not too bad, you know, provided you don't spend 50 quid on it or whatnot. It isn't all that terrible. However, obviously the model itself leaves an awful lot to be desired. But if you just want a bit of fun, you know, give it to a kid maybe, with supervision of course. Uh, it isn't all that dreadful, I wouldn't say. And blimey, that Berkshire didn't like that point, did it? All right then, folks. Well, let me know down in the comments what you thought of that one. Uh, mixed feelings from me. Obviously the model itself is pretty hideous, I think it's fair to say but the performance slightly redeems it. Not by much, but it does very slightly redeem it. And of course the smoke, as I keep saying, does make it a little bit more interesting to run. Here it comes now. But for the time being, folks, I hope you enjoyed that. It's nice to have a, a bit of a, an air, isn't it, sometimes, uh, when a model is poor. But uh, yeah, either way, hope you enjoyed the video and we'll do something, uh, probably something British again next time. So I will see you very soon. Thank you once again for watching. You will take care of yourselves. All right, see you next time.